10 minute topic revision, we are back again and I'm going to do another subtopic from algebra. Super boring, but again, very important to get these algebra, especially from year 12, all of the subtopics down before we can kind of get onto the mad stuff. So I'm going to do polynomials today and it's actually not that massive. Essentially, getting the whiteboard up, I'm only really going to talk about two main points. The first one being the factor theorem and then I'm going to talk about algebraic long division. And then there are going to be multiple applications of these, right, in kind of solving equations and stuff like that. But if we were to split this video up into two things, it's literally going to be those two. Now, luckily, in the old spec, you had to learn something called the remainder theorem as well. But you don't have to do that anymore. It's not too dissimilar from the factor theorem, so you didn't save loads of work. But it's at least one less thing to worry about. So let's talk about what this factor theorem is. So... Let's imagine we've got some function, some polynomial function. So something that looks like this, for example, different powers of x. It could be a straight line. It could be a quadratic, it could be a cubic, it could be a quartic. It could have x to the power of 464 in it. Some kind of polynomial function, right? If f of a, where a is just some number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, equals 0, then x minus a is a factor of f of x. What does this mean, okay? So, well, what do factors mean? You know, factors are different things that multiply together to kind of make something. So this applies to numbers, but it also applies to algebra. So here, 3 is a factor of 12. 4 is a factor of 12, isn't it? Now let's imagine I've got, you know, some polynomial function. I don't know. x squared plus 3x plus 2. I can write the factors of this, right? x plus 2 is a factor of this. x plus 1 is a factor of this, right? And basically, these things, they multiply together to make this polynomial. So if I know that something is a factor of a polynomial, it means that I can write this polynomial as this thing multiplied by something, right? So let's imagine I've got some f of x. I don't care what the exact f of x is. But if you tell me, ah, x minus 2 is a factor of f of x, then I know that I can write x minus 2 times whatever. I don't know what that thing is but I know that I can pull this x minus 2 out of it. So why does this factor theorem make sense? Well, look, this is basically saying, okay, well, if x minus 2 is a factor, the factor theorem says, ah, well, that must mean that when I put 2 in, in other words, f of a, f of 2, that must be 0. But this makes complete sense, because if I've got a factor of x minus 2 on the outside, if I put in x equals 2, I'm going to get 2 minus 2 here, and then whatever I get here, it doesn't matter, because this first bracket is zero. So this thing is always going to be zero. So that's why it makes sense, right? If I have x minus a, if I put in x equals a, this thing is always going to be zero. And that's why the factor theorem makes sense. So you can answer loads of questions with the factor theorem pretty easily. We can then get on to some longer kind of applications of it, which we will in the next question. But I want to give you a quick classic question here. We're given a function and we're given one of the coefficients as an unknown, it's a. It says x minus 2 is a factor of f of x, find a. So how do we convert this piece of information into an equation? Well, we look at the factor theorem. If x minus 2 is a factor of f of x, then f of 2 is going to equal 0. We've got our equation, we do the sub and in, we're sweet, right? So this thing here, I'm going to say 2 cubed, this is me working out f of 2, right? So 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared, plus 2a, right, because x is 2, minus 6, and we know that is equal to 0. Super simple. Now that's going to be 8 minus 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 2a minus 6 is 0. Do what you will, right? So what have we got? We've got minus 12 minus 16 is going to be minus 18. I'm adding 8 onto that, so that's going to be minus 10 in total. So take the 10 over to both sides. We know what to do here a is going to be 5, and that is going to be your answer. Let's go now to see the kind of bigger application of the stuff we have on the left. So the next question is going to demonstrate quite a few concepts. I just thought it was the best question to kind of wrap up everything that we do in this subtopic of polynomials, right? So all it says is solve an equation. Nothing too crazy. It's a cubic equation, right? It's got an x cubed term and a load of others. Now, if this was a quadratic, you know, you just willy-nilly factorize it, everyone's a winner cubics is quite tough. So the general kind of line of work that we're going to do is the following. 
We're going to try and get a factor of this thing using the factor theorem. We're the, you know, so we're going to get something that looks like this. We're going to know one of the factors. We're then going to do algebraic long division to find out what this thing is. We're then going to be able to fully factorize this, and then that is going to get us all of the roots of this equation. Okay, so we're not told any of the factors or the roots yet. So with the factor theorem, what we can do is we can actually just use trial and error. So what I would generally do is just start putting numbers into this, because we can think of this as an f of x, right? So I would say, what is f of 1? What is f of 2? What is f of 3? What is f of minus 1? Trial and error and just see what happens. So I usually go like try 0, I try 1, try minus 1, I try 2, try minus 2. Past minus 2, I think it's probably not going to be any of those. They're not going to make you do trial and error for 20 minutes, you know what I mean? So it's probably going to be one of these. We can instantly tell it's not going to be 0 because there's not a factor of x here. If this was an x as well, then I'd put zero in and it'd get it. But obviously, all of this would go to zero. That would be minus eight. So it's not going to be zero here. Let's put f of one in and see if it's zero. f of one is going to be one cubed plus three times one squared minus six times one minus eight, which is going to be one plus three minus six minus eight, which is going to be four minus six minus eight. This is not going to be zero, is it? Because four minus six is minus two. Minus 8, I get minus 10. So we know that this is that my x minus 1 is not going to be a factor. Why don't we try minus 1 and see what happens there? So f of minus 1 is going to be the following. Minus 1 cubed plus 3 times minus 1 squared minus 6 times minus 1 minus 8. Okay, minus 1 cubed is minus 1. Plus 3, this is going to be 1. And then that is going to turn into a plus 6. That's going to be a minus 8. Minus 1 plus 3 is 2. Add 6 minus 8, and this works, because 2 add 6 is 8. Take away 8, I get 0. Brilliant. So I know the following. I know that x plus 1, because remember, f of a, x minus a. So I'm almost doing x minus minus 1, which would turn into a plus 1. So I know that x plus 1 is a factor. Fantastic. I now know that I can express this polynomial as x plus 1 multiplied by something. What does it remain to be done? What? That's not English, but we're in a math lesson, so we're going with it. No edits. Right, so I now need to do this thing divided by this thing to find out what the remaining bit is. Okay, I'm going to go relatively quick here, but not too quick. What we do is we put the thing you're dividing by on the outside. You put the big polynomial on the inside. And here's what we do. How many times does x go into x cubed? In other words, what do I need to times x by to get x cubed? x squared. Multiply this thing back through. So I'm going to get x squared times x, which is x cubed. x squared times 1, which is x squared. These are always going to be the same by, you know, by design. But I do this, take away this now. That's going to cancel. 3x squared minus x squared is 2x squared. And then I've essentially got zeros here, so I've still got all of this stuff here. I now repeat. How many times does x go into 2x squared? 2x, right? 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Again, take away. These things cancel. Minus 6x minus 2x is minus 8x. I've got the minus 8 chilling on the end. Repeat the process. How many times does x go into minus 8x? Well, minus 8, right? Minus 8 times x is minus 8x. Minus 8 times 1 is minus 8. Take it away and I'm left with 0. If I'm left with 0, that's perfect. We know it's a factor, but we knew it should be anyway because we've done the factor theorem. Okay, what does that tell me? I'm going to make this small and I'm going to go over here. That has told me that I can write f of x as x plus 1, which we already knew, multiplied by this thing here, by x squared plus 2x minus 8. The remaining bracket is quadratic, and we know how to solve or factorize quadratics, don't we? Okay, two numbers that multiply together to make minus 8. What about plus 4 and minus 2? Because 4 take away 2 is 2. So I have fully factorized this quadratic. If I'm setting this equal to 0, I can peel off the solutions as x equals minus 1, x equals minus 4, and x equals 2, and that should take us to the 10 minutes. That is an absolutely quick blast through revision of polynomials from year 12 algebra.